Welcome to the Thriving Tides Podcast. I'm Stephanie. And I'm Julianne. If you're an entrepreneur or busy individual looking for self-care ideas, you're in the right place. And we can't wait to share our experiences with you. And we are back in In the the closet. closet. Yes, we are. We're in the closet. And we're talking about audience. (laughs) (laughs) Can you tell that we're a little bit tired today? I don't know. What is that? Are you using that as a recording? Oh, yes. <laughs> I, feel I am like so we, sorry, people. I feel like our audience and our listeners really enjoy when we're being super authentic. It's so true. It's true. I, well, the, 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 clearly I needed that to get yeah. me going. Um, but I do that sometimes before I like see a client or if I'm like hosting a workshop or something, I'll like have a little dance party or like run around the place and just like get crazy and then oh I'm like gosh. okay I'm good to go that's so easy I can totally see you doing that. <laughs> so thank you for doing this with me <laughs> I did not know it was going to be included but hey I guess I should have been warned because we've already hit record it gets the people going <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man, so that's... hopefully this helps us uh, generate our audience and not scare people away <laughs> yeah, please, we don't do this all the time if you're just tuning in <laughs> Unless you want oh, us to, man. then we will. <laughs> but yeah, today we're talking all about generating an audience and also mm-hmm. keeping that audience engaged. We did talk a little bit about marketing and getting yourself out there. We've mm-hmm. also had a content episode where we kind of touched on audience stuff. But mm-hmm. I thought, what a better time to also talk about building an audience when we are right now trying to build an audience for Thriving Tides, yep. which I think for the most part we successfully have. Yes. We're at almost 6,000 listens, which is what? crazy. Yep. Um, and also from the branding side as well, like I always kind of go back on to well, who are you talking to? Mm-hmm. Are people actually engaging with your content? And right. so uh, this is, a, I think, a fun topic for us to kind of circle back on a little bit and mm-hmm. dive a little bit deeper than the content marketing episode let us at the time so yeah for sure yeah why don't you know where to begin Love it. <laughs> i know right um yeah it's interesting like when i was reflecting thinking about this it was you can like you grow a business or you try to have a business and then if you don't have an audience slash customers <laughs> people who are interested in you whatever that might look like it's like do you even really exist or like what's going on there? Like obviously for us in the podcast, it's, we could still exist if no one was listening to us. Like we could keep doing this. I'm not sure how motivated we would be if we weren't (laughs) seeing the numbers growing. Um, But yeah, like what does it really come down to? Like how do you define who your audience is, what you can even expect in terms of a size of an audience or like what is that ideal engagement as well and and like finding that balance because we don't want to be people who are necessarily like on our phones all the time or you know there but we do want to be available and um yeah answering questions stuff like that without it taking over our lives so there's a lot a lot to unpack here I think oh yes (laughs) Oh, yes. There's so much to unpack. And it is true. Like, I think starting from ground one, like, what do you even do when you have an audience of zero? Yeah. (laughs) But the way I see it, too, is you never actually start with an audience of zero. Because even if your mom is the one who's your audience, that's still an audience. Still someone. (laughs) It's still someone. Yeah. Um, Because I think I I see that all the time where, like, um, because I've been really wanting to get into YouTube a little bit more. And Mm -hmm. I've been toying with the idea of filming youtube for myself Mm -hmm. and i was been watching a lot of like uh information based ones or education ones on like how to grow your youtube audience and stuff Mm. and they would like every single person says you're probably going to have maybe like maybe three to like 10 people that religiously watch you but you have to just keep going and keeping consistent and eventually Mm. you'll hit that one video that just takes off Mm. um and i thought that was kind of interesting because i'm just like it's so true that sometimes we think that if we do the hard work, it the numbers will just come and it'll be fine, you know? Yeah. And it is so true. Like, even when I built my business, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but when I built Summer Street Creative, I thought that within the first month, I'd gain, like, gain an audience and have mm. clients right out the, out the gate. Mm-hmm. But, like, thank goodness I had that funding. It took me at least, like, three months to build somewhat of a little bit of community 
um, now I can say that I luckily have so many amazing clients and it kind of is nice because they kind of intertwine and Mm -hmm. they'll send people to me. And so now I feel like I have a really solid audience and I consider a lot of them friends now too, which is awesome. Um, But even looking back then, I'm like, how am I supposed to even grow from this? I know Mm. logistically what to do, but it is daunting to start from ground zero. Yeah. And be like, okay, well, I also need to pay my bills. And there's <laughs> zero people looking at what I'm, my offerings are right, right now. Yeah, it's daunting. It's, um, I remember first starting out and like I was like a hawk to my social media following, right? Like how many people did I grow? Did I, oh, I got two new followers, but I lost one. And then, you know, just all over the place. It was, cons- it was consuming at some point. And now I don't. This might be bad, but I don't even look at that Um, because I can't. It's just I find, too, for me, the way that my business works is I don't actually get many of my clients through any social media channels. It's all through my own business development and network and stuff like that, too. So I think that's a key thing that we'll probably touch on, too, is like, where is your audience? Yes. So not spending time where they're not because I've spent I've been like, oh, if I could just keep growing my Instagram. But that's not where my people are. Exactly. <laughs> there are fun people there. My, you know, my people in terms of like who I like to socialize with. Yeah, I get a lot of that through my Instagram channel, but it's not really resulting in clients there. Um, well, social media is kind of like an interesting one because there's some kind of like false positive, if that makes any mm-hmm. sense. Like you think that, oh, just because I have like I have about a thousand something followers Mm -hmm. just because I have a thousand something followers does not mean that they're on the next day ready to get a branding package for me or get a logo for me or get a website for me there might just be people I know or people that are interested or even people that Mm -hmm. are just following me just to get their own numbers up yeah so it's like it's kind of a false hope that like you think oh just because if I get my numbers up Numbers at the end, at the end mm-hmm. of the day on social media literally mean squat. Yeah. It's who's actually engaged. Like you can yeah. have 500 followers and have like, if you can have, I'd trade 500 followers for a thousand followers if 500 of those people were actually actively engaged. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like why numbers don't mean anything. So if you're listening to this and you're stressed out about the number that you see on social media, don't. It's, don't it's worry okay. about it. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Just take a chill pill. <laughs> wow i'm gonna be that kind of person tonight eh? um sassy sassy my inner jessica i need, I need to name mine i was gonna say you need to name your jessica one day can't steal my jessica <laughs> <laughs> no she's all yours um yeah it's i think it's tricky too like i i am my product and that makes it feel challenging and vulnerable in in building my audience too right where it's like oh like how could I possibly have somebody else be helping me out in that way um and that's just like a limiting belief that I put on myself too yeah but yeah it is what it is it's it's a tricky one it's um kind of a mind F. <laughs> like, are we cursing on this episode? Yeah. Do we have to make it explicit? Um, that you feel like, like, I'm not saying I'm a celebrity by any sense, right? But, like, when you have to be that face of an organization or anything like that, too, especially in a small place like here in PEI, yeah. um, that gets tricky because sometimes you feel like you're on display or, like, you're exposed to an audience even when you're not wanting to be, I guess. Yeah. So there's that kind of side of it, too, that we have to consider at times. That's true. Yeah. It's weird. (laughs) (laughs) But that's okay, too, because sometimes, like, you run into the coolest people. Like, I, it's so weird when someone's like, oh, I saw you on Instagram or whatever. Not that that's happened a lot, uh, because I also don't spend that much time on there anymore um but yeah it's it's an interesting like what resonates with people and that's how you figure out like where is that engagement um because sometimes the silliest thing or what you think is the silliest thing is what more people will respond to it's true yeah yeah and do you find like with the podcast too it's kind of opened up a whole different kind of like mind f in the sense that like okay, now we're being extra vulnerable with people too. Therefore, are people going to see me differently? Because, Mm -hmm. like, I'm just thinking back on, like, especially our first few episodes where I was being very open and honest. And now I'm like, oh, my goodness, did I just shoot myself in the foot? Am I, 
like, yes, we're gaining listeners and they're, you know, connecting with with me on a deeper level level and I've had a really a lot of really awesome conversations based off of conversations that we've had in the closet mm-hmm. but I'm just thinking like did I shoot myself in the foot if someone listens to it and then they're mm. like oh she's not a professional because she talked about her mental health journey or mm. something you know what I mean so I'm just like ah, I don't really know if like I sometimes kind of wonder about that but then at the same time like part of building an audience and like an active like and keeping people engaged just telling like your your authentic self, it's storytelling, mm-hmm. it's being authentic and saying, hey, this is kind of what's going through. Mm-hmm. This is so true. If we just went on this podcast, self-care podcast, and just said, everything's fine all the time. It's all good. Like, positive rosies. We're sunshine. perfect. Yeah. Would, would we even have a podcast? Because who would want mm-hmm. to tune in to people being like, everything's fine. Just go oh. go get a massage and like, you'll be fine. We could have we could have <laughs> just called ourselves the highlight reel instead of thriving tots. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, you're totally right. I think the vulnerability is so important. Um and yeah, sometimes I forget because I don't have the best memory. Um, like what we've said on here. And oh. now like that we're getting up to, you know, like we're at almost sixty episodes. Well, yep. this one's fifty nine. Um that's a lot of talking and a lot of ourselves that we've put out into the world that anyone can access at any time. Yeah. So when people are like, oh, I've been listening to some of your I'm like, episodes. No. I'm like, which ones? <laughs> what did <laughs> I say? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to just be like, oh, thank you so much. Or like, yeah. what did you think? But in my head, it's like, oh. <laughs> exposed. I, I feel know, seen. I need to know exactly which one and what feelings yeah. you had towards me. Were. Right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. That's kind of the weird thing about, and this is just, like, me thinking right now. It's just weird, the weird part of podcasting that I didn't really think about. Because, mm. yeah, there there have been a couple people that said, oh, you're you're the podcast, like, Thriving Ties. Like, a couple people said that to me. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like me? Is this a good thing? Or <laughs> Do you not like me? Is, mm. is my voice annoying? Like, I, I, I automatically, Jessica tunes in and mm-hmm. is like, ah. right? imposter syndrome, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, but exciting. And it's been fun to grow this audience. I think um, we've pulled in like some of our own following to it. And then we've met yes. new people through it as well. And yeah, it just keeps evolving from there, which is really neat. Exactly. I think it's hard to know. Like, so when we're first starting, especially like, so if we think about Thriving Tides and try to use that as our example through this whole episode, it's what our people's expectations of us like what does our audience really want or need or you know what really excites them Mm -hmm. and I think we started off making a lot of assumptions about that because we didn't know right which I guess when you're branding a business you want to do some level of market research but there is always a little air of guesstimating (laughs) as you're going like, usually, even when you're building an audience from square one, you should always build to who you're trying to talk to. So what's mm. the avatar or, pro, like, profile look like? And mm-hmm. that goes with, like, an audience as well. We even looked at, like, oh, they're going to be like us because we're trying to talk to entrepreneurs and self-care. Uh, fast forward, like, I think by episode, like, 10 or something, we realized that a lot of our audience, half of them actually aren't entrepreneurs. So that's why you probably noticed that we pull back on some of the entrepreneur stuff. We still like to put it in because mm-hmm. it is authentic to us. But we also see you lis- listeners that are listening and mm-hmm. may not necessarily aren't even like thinking about being mm-hmm. an entrepreneur or like not yet wanting to be an entrepreneur and still listening. Yeah. So we had to like, really evaluate that. And that kind of changed our personas as well. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of cool because we were like, oh, there's a whole different kind of audience here. Yeah. Um, so it's like, yeah, you want to start off with a profile of like who you are trying to get. But then once you are building said content and like actually gaining an audience, who are you actually talking to mm-hmm. at the moment? Yeah. Right. And it's like, do you picture them in your mind? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And um, like right now, a lot of what we're doing is, you know, just our our episodes. Um, But then like even right down to the branding, I guess. Right. Like what's going to catch their eye? What are they excited about? Um, We still have our website in the works and... (laughs) That's not oh, anything against you. It's both it's, of us. Uh, no, That's, but uh, it's also like my, like, I, I hate that it's taken so long to get this website done. That's just like, ah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's going to come. We are wrapping up this season soon. I guess it's a good time to give kind of a heads up to our loyal listeners. There will be a bit of a pause um, when we hit the holidays, and we are going to commit to getting the website done. (laughs) It will happen. Um, And just a couple other little, like, kind of housekeeping things that we haven't had the time to put um, our energy into as we've been keeping up with our weekly episodes so we're sad to take a break but excited too because that means we're just going to come back feeling much more ready to serve you as our audience and our our people our community really um and not feel like that's like hanging over it (laughs) right well and I think that's a good thing to note on too is that when you start like especially when you're first starting we we first started it was just it was a fun project we didn't have mm-hmm. a lot of listeners so like yeah. it wasn't oh we don't really need a website yet and then we started thinking hmm, for content and to grow and to give mm-hmm. more audience we do need to do this and x y and z mm-hmm. i think about it all the time like i have all these ideas for like exactly like thriving tides of how we can grow but every single time you add a task it's a lot of work and i think that's the biggest thing too is uh, and a lot of people have a issue with growing is because you, it, it's easy to say, I need to do this, this, and this to grow. Mm. But then actually implementing said steps are sometimes the hardest. Mm. Um, right now, like, we're not uh, bringing in any monetization yet. So, like, it's it's tricky So because we can't hire someone outside to kind of help us get mm-hmm. those elements together. Um, but then, like, it's like I could see in other businesses where that's when you're probably going to hire the content manager or the social yeah. media manager to kind of help bring that other content because they're like mm-hmm. yes even in the content episode we talked about not only social media content but blog posts and there's so many different avenues to grow but it's like where does one even start and I even think about it same with the website we mm-hmm. we realized that we needed to have a website but it's so much work to get every blog post episode the graphics for it that mm-hmm. needs to be resized for social or for uh, websites mm-hmm. um and whatnot and it's it I could totally see how it's kind of this never-ending cycle of you add something, you take something back. And yeah, I totally get it if you're listening and you're like, I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I know I need to grow an audience, but I'm finding it hard mm-hmm. to even maintain the audience I have now. I get it. I see you. Yeah, <laughs> big time. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing that entrepreneurs, even people that are just doing social media for fun, mm-hmm. sometimes it's kind of like the never ending cycle or loop of mm-hmm. it's daunting because there's just so much to do and I know time is subjective, but, like, there's little time sometimes to even do said things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, But until still taking care of yourself. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Right. My self-care does not include writing blogs. (laughs) No? I wish it did. I really (laughs) wish it did. Um, And sometimes, like, similar to that, too, like, we didn't know off the get-go that we were going to blog every episode, right? So had we known that? At the beginning, we would have been writing them as we were going. Yeah. I mean, I'm still not writing them as we're doing say. these new ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are um, getting better at putting more notes so that it's easier for us. Correct. To... Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's just like you just got to sit down and get it done. But yeah. that's the same as any business too, right? You got to start somewhere. Yeah. And then more and more is going to get added on. And it's, you know, to what extent can you do it? When do you start hiring? Um if you're monetizing, that's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. But it's still really fun to see what works and what doesn't because same like, so we started doing just audio when we kicked off Thriving Tides. And then a few people said that they'd really like to see it video. Yeah. And so we were like, oh, we're gonna be youtube stars <laughs> let's do this and we started and we have very low views well in it, it comparison to like our numbers of listeners i was kind of shocked i'm still shocked at the numbers sometimes I'm like, yeah what? yeah <laughs> and so you know the few people who wanted it got it and that's great and luckily it's really not a lot of extra work for you yeah to no, put it not. on youtube so we're gonna continue doing it yeah don't worry don't worry, it's not going anywhere. Um, but that's like, if that had been something that maybe was going to take a lot more time or it was going to cost more money, then you got to really sit back and say, okay, where is our time best spent? And yeah. I think those are some tough decisions that business owners have to make at times too, right? Because it's like if a couple of people are asking for it, but then all the rest of your audience isn't, 
are you going to appease the small or the masses? Yeah. And and how do you make that choice? Exactly. Yeah, and even I'm thinking even too like looking at our just our data as well too, but thinking of okay, well even us introducing the mini-sodes, mm. um, which, by the way, if you haven't heard our last episode, it's our first mini-sode. We're mini-sode. doing mini-episodes because we do realize how daunting it can be to listen to a full hour mm-hmm. and a half. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we're still going to keep that because we do love doing our in-depth conversations, but mm-hmm. just to kind of have a little mini-sode. It's yeah. Super cute. You know, a little, little, little something. A little bite. Um, we did that because we noticed that, like that might be something that people might like to hear. So we're mm-hmm. testing it out yeah. to see and if it, if the numbers are the same or worse, we'll have to reevaluate from there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the, the thing too, is I think sometimes you have to just test the waters, see if it does work or mm-hmm. not. Like we could have hypothetically got rid of video. Um, like I said, it's not anything for me. It's literally the same program. It's just a, a clicking one more button. <laughs> a whole more button? A whole more button. Well, oh a couple goodness. more buttons, but it's like an easy button. It's like, da, da, da. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like if it was an, like a, a huge ask for me to have to do a whole different video um, and it was a lot more work and we're only getting more what we were getting, then, yeah, you'd have to make that decision mm-hmm. to say, is my time? Yeah, worth yeah. worth this right now. Yeah. Can I put this energy to somewhere else mm-hmm. that could grow my audience even better? Like, am I should I be spending more time with my audience um, mm. and vice versa? Yeah. So. Yeah, it's tricky. It's a lot to think about. <laughs> <laughs> but usually, like, general rule of thumb is you, if you have an audience or you're wanting an audience, you're going to have to have some kind of content plan. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely go uh, listen to that episode. I think it's like 38 or something like that. 36. 36. 36. I see it. You wrote it in your I did notes. write it somewhere. You're I'm welcome. like, I know I did. I'm not going to take it. credit for that. <laughs> you um, wrote it. I just, it's right in front of me. Because, yeah, I think yeah, that's the biggest thing, too, is... And it's the easiest for, easiest with like money mm. ears is to provide value. Because mm-hmm. usually if people are going to follow you, they're following you for a value piece. Yeah. There's some people that just want to, you know, they like your personality and that's great yeah. too. But if you're offering value on top of that, even yeah, better. That's even better. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm saying like you need to have some kind of content plan mm-hmm. if you're wanting to build an yeah, audience. For sure. Yeah. Makes sense. Um. And then that just, like, helps you be less scattered as a person, yeah. too, right? Like, we're pretty good with ours, I think. Um, and, like, if you, like, look at our Instagram, you notice, like, our grid changes pattern from time to time, which is fun, too, right? Like, and I think yeah. that's necessary, and you can't just be same old all the time. We're always trying different things. What does this look like? What does that look like? What does our schedules look like right now too so that we're not over committing ourselves and then just doing like a half-assed job of something because it fits the grid or whatever exactly. um so it's just figuring all that out and then like what um you know sometimes like when with like the enneagram and the astrology when you had more time to like make those graphics and that was really fun and and those were super engaging too right i think people being able to like see themselves in something is really cool like it's almost like holding a mirror up to your audience yeah yeah, well, it's like it's shareable content. That's mm. huge. Shareable content is like massive, especially yeah. on Instagram. Um, the algorithm loves to pick up when people are sharing content mm. and actively engaging. So mm. the algorithm nowadays mostly just looks at like how many, not not only how many likes you have, but then how many people are commenting mm. and how many people are sharing that right. content as well. Um, it's not, and also how long they actually spend on the post as well. Right. <clears throat> So, like, even the algorithms are valuing things a little bit different, mm. different. whereas before it was, like, how many likes you were getting mm. and whatnot. Now it's yeah. not so much about, well, it's, likes are still an equation, part of the equation, but yeah. they're not, but not the biggest the factor, Yeah, um, which I think is kind of huge because, yeah, there's sometimes where you put, yeah, those Enneagrams took forever, mm-hmm. but, like, when you think about the actual investment of it, and that's the thing too, you have to think about like, yes, if this does take a little bit more time, is it worth it? Mm. And I think it was because we got so many shares out of those. Uh, we gained a bunch of followers from those too. Mm-hmm. And also like our audience loved that. And I love, I loved seeing people say, oh my goodness, you totally got us. And mm-hmm. we're like, oh, that's awesome. We obviously yeah. nailed it. That's awesome. <laughs> that always feels nice. So yeah, that well, always feels good for you too. Like, Yeah. Well, yeah. that's like where that, like that sparks that connection. 
Yeah. Right? yeah. That's that where it becomes two way and it's not just us pushing information out all the time. Yes. But it's so nice to see things come back our way. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the give it's and take. Happy. Yeah. You don't want to be just like a monotonous robot just like spewing stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> nice robot moves. Go check out the YouTube for stuff's robot moves. <laughs> we need numbers on that, apparently. Right. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah. <laughs> Let's spend a little more time together. Um, yeah. So, what do you think are like some other great ways to get people? talking back to us and I don't mean that in a talk back way but like to get the conversation flowing in both directions what are what are some other good tips that you have for that stuff yeah I think the biggest thing and this goes with even just like in general for your business what you should be doing regardless Mm. is active listening it's kind of the most underrated um, aspect of building a brand that I think a lot of people kind of miss. Um, And what I mean by active listening is you're removing yourself from like any set opinions or thoughts that you may have, not only of your business, but of the people that you have following you. Because sometimes we can start Mm. building assumptions of what people think of us Mm. and or assumptions of, uh, you know, how other people think or what our offerings are. Right. So often. Like, it's that ego side of, (laughs) I already know what's going on. It's okay. I don't have to change anything. Yeah. I'm just listening to respond. I'm not actually listening to understand. I'm putting out fires when I see them, but it's not a big deal. But it's, like, actually taking a step back and looking at yourself and your business, like, above. Like a ghost. (laughs) Right. It's it's like that meta view, right? Like, let's get that helicopter up here and be able to take a much bigger look at things than like if you're in the weeds <laughs> exactly so like you're thinking like are the people that are actually like what we did when we were looking at our audience and mm. we we're kind of shocked about our audience are you looking at that or are, are, right. are you engaging with the people that you thought originally you were going to engage with mm. when you did your first customer profiles right if not is there something that needs to be changed yeah um are you connecting with people outside of your customer circles as well and why is that do you want to work with these kinds of people Mm. if not then what do you have to change to get back to that ideal customer or client that you're looking for Um, also look at like what is trending even outside of your own scope of what you do yeah what is trending in the world so like for example right now (laughs) Like our our whole entire life is millennials. I think it's a, a millennial thing. Is that mm. pug on um, TikTok right now? If it's a Bones Day or not a Bones Day? Okay, I <laughs> saw someone post about this today on their Instagram. I'm like, what does this? What is mean? this? Yeah. So there's this old dog. Hang on, I'm gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm there's old. A, there's an old pug. He's 13. Okay. Um, his oh, I can't remember his name right now, but it's the cutest little pug ever. And it basically, the owner, it, it's like a prediction of if it's going to be a good day, it's going to be a bones day. If it's going to be a chill day where you need to take some self-care, it's a no bones day. So you lift up his pug and see if his pug stays standing, then it's a bones day. So that's like active. Let's go get the world done. Like, whatever. <laughs> like, we should be doing more posts about bones day because it's all about self-care. Whereas if it's a no bones day because he flops over, it's a self-care day. It's a, you know, just retreating chill kind of day and people are going crazy so like for example if you're lis- actively listening yeah you can then make a fun post of uh oh it's a no bones day let's all just take care um you have businesses like domino's pizza commenting on that guy's page and say oh it's a no bones day time to get a pizza you know and, and that's smart and then they had a whole bunch of people like it because it's so mm. it, they actively listen to like okay well this is what's trending right now so yeah. maybe we should add our snippet to it interesting especially mm. if you're like if your audience for example this no bones thing or it's yeah. a bones day thing yeah if your audience is mostly millennials like we should actually be saying something about no bones or bones day hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like oh man the things you learn <laughs> really though well yeah i i meant to look it up earlier because i was just like having a 
a a moment. I was just like, I need a break. And so I was scrolling social and, and someone had it on their story. And I was like, I need to go look uh, look up what this means. Like, am I just out of the loop? Clearly. So thank you for enlightening me. You're welcome. And hopefully there's other people listening right now that also didn't know what it means. <laughs> I get so excited. You need to spend more time on TikTok. I don't spend any time on TikTok except for what you sent me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so it's like hearing those trends, understanding what's going on, really immersing yourself in what else might be happening with them too, right? To see where it might align with your brand. That's smart. Exactly. Um, and it also helps like for content wise too, right? Like yeah. so the same with like the no bones thing. Like, yeah. When you're like, oh, that, I don't oh, know what to post today. Oh, I can just do something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the greatest thing ever because it's, e- it's much easier to have that like low hanging fruit content as well. Right. Because um, like, yeah, you can do the calendar days or whatever, the international day of blah 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 and those are good every once in a while but like you can't ride that train mm-hmm. every single year every single like it's a little boring it gets a little boring and no one really wants to tap for that whereas if you're d- doing like trending topics mm-hmm. or even trending issues that are happening people are wanting again the authenticity they're wanting to see real people behind businesses if mm. biz- like right now the tr- the trend even though i think it's more shouldn't just be a trend is like we, we're talking about the body positivity movement mm-hmm. yeah um, and being more inclusive mm-hmm. like we need you then you have to look back on your business am i being more inclusive and are my odd is my audience connecting with that or mm. is my audience starting to feel like this isn't a safe space for them right because if it's not a safe space i'm going to go to the company that's the safe space for me absolutely so yeah yeah let's talk about <laughs> um so much oh there's so much yeah <laughs> and yeah so like in a, in addition to like the the listening as well it's make sure you're asking the questions right so ask them what's working what's not working um yeah. you know do you have people like key people within your audience that you can just have a full conversation with um you know we throw polls and questions up on our instagram stories every now and then too to try to get the two-way street going exactly <laughs> um and it's fun when people give their opinions and for the most part people love to give their opinions right? i'm always like yeah oh you want to hear what i have to say here <laughs> you go i'll give it to you yeah exactly granted a lot of people want to give their negative opinions mm. but it's a, that's a that's a whole different sometimes. conversation <laughs> yeah. um another thing to kind of think about too when you're thinking about developing your audience or you know keeping your audience engaged is to maintain your brand's MVP and to stay authentic mm. to it as well. So your MVP is your, basically your value proposition. Mm-hmm. What's the most valuable thing about you and your business and what you're offering uh, is. <clears throat> uh, like, so I even like wrote this in the notes because I thought it'd be kind of funny that like, yeah, can you imagine if one day we flipped and went full blown like hustle culture and like lovers of you know, actively doing a whole bunch of things and Mm -hmm. kind of threw self-care out the window, like, we would probably lose so many listeners, uh, I am, like, 100% certain, and people would think, like, that's really not who they are. Yeah. Why are they pretending to be something else? Like, that's, our value is that we're coming from from it from a place of, we don't want people to be burnt out and hustle culture is bad, so it'd be so, it'd lose trust in our brand right they'd be like they've been lying to us all along they like hooked us in with this like false sense of who they are and then bam like oh i feel really terrible exactly well that's when you like you even see people that have a large audience that switched their um their relatability Mm. they became unrelatable yeah and it's kind of an inevitable thing when you start getting that's the the big mind f about it is that when you get to a certain part of an audience, I keep going back to like the Rachel Hollis. Like mm. when she started getting her, she has like a shit ton of followers, but then she started becoming unrelatable because her life is unrelatable anymore. It really is. So it's like, what do you even do? I can't like, what's the right way to go about it? Who knows? Well, it's a tough one. Like how? So it's like, yeah, anyone who becomes a millionaire, yeah, is going to lose some sense of who they are, probably. Yeah. I hope that doesn't happen to us when we become rich and famous. <laughs> You've heard it here. You heard it, yeah. You yeah, pull us happening. back. You give us a slap. <laughs> Remind us who we are. Yeah. But I think that's also like, again, you always have to have that, who am I? And yeah. 
even if things do change, it's are you still staying the same? Mm. And is your value Yeah, still like the there? core of who you are and then the core of your organization too, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, and yeah, actually provide value too, because that's the biggest thing. I, mm. I see so many like posts that end up like there's nothing valuable here Mm. and like you're not posting any blog content it's just kind of superficial stuff that people yeah you're gonna get like a couple likes and whatnot but are they actively looking at exactly what you're doing or Mm. are you offering valuable content and again go back to the content marketing episode for yeah more on that lots of ideas yeah yeah um And then, like, be accessible to people, too, right? Like, if they can't connect, if they can't find you, they can't connect with you. (laughs) Um, So, you know, as much as, yeah, we don't want to spend our entire lives just, like, sitting on our platforms being like, oh, I wonder if someone's going to come chat with me. But, like, checking in when we see that someone's tagging us in their stories or commenting on things and, you know, coming back and and responding to them, things like that, too. Um, And I think, like, I think we do a pretty good job of being accessible and people know that even if they want to reach out to us, not just through Thriving Tides, they can reach out to us on our own accounts, too. And, you know, we're pretty open books, which is great. But we got to be where our people are or how do we chat with them? Exactly. Yeah. (sighs) Another thing to kind of keep in mind when you are building your audience is go on video more Mm. uh, (laughs) or go on like lives. Uh, There's a reason why like video is king right now um, and why Instagram is also threatening on taking away photo posting, which that's a whole thing. They've been doing that for a while, haven't they? Oh, yeah, they're trying to. They're trying to compete with. But the, the biggest thing they are mostly for photo sharing but anyways don't get me started i get so mad about why like don't be another (laughs) anyways but there's a reason why they're trying to do that is because it is true people connect more with people that they visually see and can talk to Mm. than just a stagnant picture because a picture you can make assumptions whereas if someone's talking to you um or like on a live where you can actually have a conversation and answer people in real Mm. time Mm -hmm. it becomes more of a connection fair yeah, that makes sense. Than a stagnant post. Um, and, like, yeah, that's why we wanted to really go on video, but yeah, different kind of video we need to do. Yeah. More stories or more lives. lives. Yeah. Ugh, lives. <laughs> I know, right? I don't do lives. They scare me. I, I have too much anxiety for lives, I think. Cause... Yeah. I think I'd be okay with it, but I'm just, like, I don't know. Yeah. No. Too much anxiety. I, I guess I just assume people hear enough of my voice with their weekly episode listening. So, <laughs> do they really, do need, they more? really need more opinions? Do they really need more? <laughs> oh, man. Um, and then, yeah, encourage tagging. Like, I mean, this we see a lot with like challenges and contests and things like that, um, where like tag a friend to enter stuff too. But I like the. The one that you wrote here, too, is just, like, tag a friend who needs to hear this or, you know, tag a friend that you love to go do self-care things with or, you know, yeah. whatever it might be. It doesn't always have to be for a challenge or a contest or that there might be something that they could win. It's just, like, getting that engagement a little bit, so. Exactly. And yeah. even to show, like, a real-time example, when we had our astrology episodes, I think we had a couple mm. people tagging people they knew, and in our comments we said, tag the blank in your life take the Sagittarius in your life take the Taurus in your life yeah like, and we actually saw people do that and share yeah. it to people that they knew that were yeah that's pretty cool that was so that's cool like, oh, our like, hearts oh. just grew so much yeah <laughs> I loved that yeah yeah pretty cool um similar to what you were saying too like the trends right so the bones and no bones <laughs> <laughs> yeah we need to stay on top of that I think I get overwhelmed with them because I'm like well when I go through like what I get sucked into the most on like Instagram and and stuff is the reels right so I'm watching them all and it's like the same audio clip over and over and over and over and over again and then I'm like am I really just gonna go post the same thing that a million other people have already posted and then I just like stop myself because I'm like that's stupid but but all these other people have done it to flip it though has your audience seen that Exactly. So, like, that, that's where it goes back. That <laughs> yeah. it's like there is a chance that your audience may be seeing the exact same audio clip or yeah. whatnot or the same the same trend. Mm-hmm. But 
if they aren't, then it's also an opportunity to mm. connect even further from True. a trending thing. Yeah. Um, I have so many of them saved. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have so many but have I done them. anything with them? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah. Telling like, them myself. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. But I get that comes to, back down to the balance, too, right? Of like what what we can do. We're not in a position right now where we want to spend money on getting someone to do our social media yeah. or anything like that too um but that's what it is and like even if you're not ready to hire someone there isn't any shame on even per like paid social media ads too yeah like true. if there's a post that's like really connecting and it's you are talking about an offering that you're doing and mm-hmm. people are really liking it boost that then also the cool thing too is if you boost it you not only collect data but you might reach someone new Mm. that hasn't really hit the keywords that you've been kind of putting out there on social media or whatnot um so there is no shame in paid social media ads um if done right yes Uh, and again don't start don't blow like a bunch of money right away like start small Mm -hmm. start conservatively that's totally cool maybe 20 bucks here 20 bucks there look at the data if it's not working pull back and yeah. figure something out that's fair um but i always like to say don't buy followers and likes mm. and stuff uh not only is it bad for the algorithm um it's just not good people can usually sniff out when people have purchased um bot, uh, f- bots pretty much you can kind of tell when they're bots yeah. um and whatnot so just don't do that but yeah, boost to ad every once in a while, or boost to mm-hmm. ad, boot, bo- boost, 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 <laughs> boost, boost, boost it real good. Yeah, that's fair. I've done that. Well, I think I've done that probably more with Joey's stuff. Like we've boosted a few things that you know we're like, oh, a lot of people are talking about this one, so let's do that. And yeah, yeah, it's just pretty easy, and it, and it's easy to do. Oh, totally. I mean, they're always encouraging you to do it, even if you go to do it and you change your mind, then they keep reminding you. Do you want to boost this? Do you want to boost this? Do you want to boost this? Oh, yeah. Especially on, like, Instagram. Leave me alone, Facebook. This ad is doing, or this post is mm. doing really well. You should boost it. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's not kind of what I, and that's the thing, too. Like, you don't want to just boost whatever is For performing well. Because if it does have, it has nothing about, like, your value proposition, mm-hmm. who you are and why. Like, yeah, you might get a couple likes, but it's not impactful. Yeah, if it's not aligning reason. with your goals. Yeah. Then Like, yeah, you'll get a little bit of engagement, money. but just... Are you really wanting to pay for likes? Yeah. You're really wanting to pay for someone to notice you, really. Yeah. But no, thank you. There's that. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, sharing testimonials. I like that, too. Um, so if any of you listening right now want to send us a testimonial. We would love that. I'll take it. Yeah. You'll get featured in a post of some sort. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I'll, make a, I'll make a really pretty graphic. <laughs> I would love to hear. But, like... Even if you don't want us to share it openly, a testimonial, I would love to hear from some Feedback. of you who listen. Um, what do you love? What in, like? Do you want us to stop singing to you? Uh, <laughs> is there any guests that we should be getting? Or, you know, like anything, anything. We'd love, love, love to hear more. Yeah, exactly. Well, we always say this is a mm-hmm. podcast for you listeners as much as it is for us doing it. Yeah. And feedback, like, it's always great to have i i try to give feedback whenever mm-hmm. i listen to things or get involved with things because i do know how important it is yeah so yeah let us know we would love that yeah we would and thank you for those who have left us reviews too by the way yeah that's another way to give us testimonials that also helps oh, us uh, for the algorithm so of the podcast as well so thank you for that so if you want to do that too that's cool too <laughs> yeah we're here for oh, it man, we're here for it um <laughs> But yeah, sometimes it's just as easy as being consistent, too. I think the fact that we consistently, for the most part, have episodes and we have a guaranteed, mm-hmm. like, schedule of yeah. by every Wednesday you're going to hear something from us or yeah. um, try to get as much at least once a week, if we can, yeah. for social media, try to still stay up with it. Like, even mm-hmm. when we're on our breaks, we try to be consistent. Yeah, That even helps, too, because then it... The algorithm can tend to, like, I have noticed since mm-hmm. I have taken a couple breaks from Summer Street Creative's Instagram, it's harder to get back up there, mm-hmm. the numbers-wise. So if you're yeah. consistent, you don't lose as much of that engagement yeah. um, as well. So, and But the thing is, too, we also get it, like, self-care. 
if it's if it's really freaking stressing you out mm-hmm. to get posts out, just leave it. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's okay. If you need to take a break, take a break. And I think we talked about this um, heading into, like, the holidays last year, too, was, you know, just give your audience a heads up if you're going to take, like, if you're going to yeah. go silent for a while, too. Because I think also... Those who really care about you, they care about you as a person behind the scenes too, and yeah. they're like, "Are they okay? Yeah. What happened? I did, where are they?" Right? Like, <laughs> some people may not notice at all. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be honest about that too. Um, but your audience probably does care about you just as much as you care about them too. So, if you need the break, take it. Exactly. And if you can, just give a heads up. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what else? How do we have Christmas? Christmas. It kind of like leads me to like the like doing something special for your long haulers and the people mm. that are actively engaged and participating in your offerings and whatnot is, you know, do something special for them. So mm. for me, I always during Christmas, I always send a, a card with a little gift or a little something. It's a token mm-hmm. appreciation for the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so little everyone loves it because it's again it's you're thinking of them and you're thanking them of wow thank you for your support through all this and yeah like even there's uh, sometimes i'll even just send a simple christmas card to like a client from a couple years back but they still engage with all my posts Mm -hmm. i'll send a christmas card and they love it they're like i didn't even realize you thought about me yeah of course that's so nice and it's it. People appreciate that. I appreciate that when people think of me like that. I'm like, Absolutely. oh my goodness, I came to your mind. That's amazing. Yeah. These are human beings, right? Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just I yeah. love it. I love, I love it. it. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Another thing you can do is host a challenge. So if you <laughs> listen to our last episode, mm-hmm. all about do you accept the challenge? Mm-hmm. Uh, take a listen at that. Uh, it's definitely still very popular and a great way to keep an active engagement and to really share your value proposition as well. Yeah. Um, that's a really good one. Yeah. I think, we, well, we kind of had the morning challenge. True. Yeah. It wasn't really a challenge, more like a setting up a routine. Yeah. More so than, because there was a no. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to come up with one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We have to do more challenges. The right ones. The yeah. right ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like your this next tip here too of like hosting parties and events. Um, obviously that's for like if you have local people, uh, yeah. but you could do <laughs> online parties too. We just know they're not quite as fun. Um, but yeah, I love that too, and I'm still not letting go of like thriving tides events in the future. Oh, it we're definitely happen. having that. It will happen. Yeah. So you guys just wait, just wait. Um, and then just really like being there to help like genuinely help people right like so I think when we're an- taking the time to actually answer someone's question or reply to a comment that they made um even just like taking the time to write our blog posts out <laughs> it will happen oh yeah we're getting there oh, yeah, it'll happen. We're probably about a third of the way there oh, yeah. um <laughs> uh but like that's us also looking at you know some people like to listen some people like to read some people like to watch so we're trying to be all the things that are killing ourselves yeah trying trying to do it right like and still having fun because at the end of the day is we still want to have fun self-care 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 okay. yeah <laughs> oh man yeah. yeah there's so much that goes into getting the audience like gr- growing and then also not feeling like you're just after that next follower or the next person to be in your community, but like letting those who are there know that they're special and important too. Exactly. Right. So it's like, you're, I got to balance those two sides of it, I guess. Exactly. And before ending this episode, we did, we actually had a couple, uh, listeners mm-hmm. write in as well. Cause again, we always like to engage on Instagram. Yes. Um, and we proposed the co- the question of what do you do to create a community? and or audience. And mm-hmm. someone said they're writing a book, which is exciting, mm-hmm. contributing and supporting local groups I love and who I share values with. Mm. We know this person and she is very much community focused. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then another one said providing exclusive information for your product. 
So example, show this post to receive percentage off. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good one. As I yeah, another really good one of here's a a token of if you do this. Yeah, yeah. right. And it's like not even a whole lot of extra work, but just connects with people that much more. So exactly, there are many, many, many ideas here. If you have any that we didn't touch on or anything that you're curious about that you're like, oh, would this maybe work? Shoot us a message. Engage with us. Exactly. We're here. And at the end of the day, just remember, your audience are real people. Yes. It's all about building relationships Mm -hmm. and cultivating those relationships and just treat people how you'd want to be treated at the end Mm. of the day. And you will be fine even if you don't listen to any of the tips that we talked about today. Yes. That's true. Just Just be in your awesome self. Yeah. And with that being said, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, you. Thanks, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> we need to finish this episode. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>Thriving Tides on Facebook, Instagram, and now YouTube to stay connected. And remember, don't fight the rip currents.